Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com. Welcome to The Headphone Show. And today I'm going to do a first impressions of the Hi-Fi Man HE6 SE um, planar magnetic over-ear open back headphone. Now, this is a very high-end headphone from Hi-Fi Man that is, I guess, the successor to the very famous HE6, which of course was ridiculously difficult to drive. And there's always been that question, that meme of, but can it run the HE6? That's, that's sort of what this, the previous version of this has been all about. And so I've been very curious to see how Hi-Fi Man has sort of followed up or succeeded that headphone with this newer version. So first things first, as the original HE6 was incredibly amp picky, um, this one I'm imagining is also going to be fairly amp picky. Mm, reading that the uh, impedance is only 50 ohms, which is not that high, but the sensitivity here is only 83.5 dB. So, and they didn't publish anything more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that generally means that this is going to probably take quite a bit of power to drive. And ideally, you want a fairly high current amplifier with these types of planars. Uh, so I will take this home and run this off of my Kyan IHA6, and I'll try and run it balanced as well. That's going to be sort of the main thing that I drive it from, because that's sort of meant for this type of headphone. But all of those you know, further uh, sources that I'm sure everybody wants to know, how does it pair with the HE6 SE, or how does the HE6 SE pair with a given amplifier or whatever, um, that's going to have to wait until I do my full review of it, which should be a little later on. I'll need to put it through the ringer and see what sources pair best with this and which ones aren't really all that great. At the moment, I'm just going to be running it off of the uh, SPL Foniter E. Let me try and take it out of its uh, case here. Now, this is uh, sort of a leather case underneath this little exterior piece. Throwing that away. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Not the cleanest, but... They've had these types of boxes now for a while, but it feels like with every new Hi-Fi Man release, whether it's a version 2 or a 2020 or a 2021 or an SE or a version 3 or a different model of the same version from a different place, they have a different packaging scheme for each of them. Okay, let's take it out of the packaging and... See, I like the way that that opens. That's great. Okay, you get the little booklet here, which very few people actually read. They tell you how to use headphones. And here are the headphones in all of their glory. Now, I used to own the original HE500, which the HE6 was sort of like the higher end, bigger brother of, or more demanding, power demanding, uh, bigger brother. Um, and my main complaint with the HE500 was that it had somewhat of a, you know, rugged kind of build style where the comfort wasn't really all that great. It was a little bit heavy. And so, you know, it ended up being not something I would wear for long periods of time. And I got to say that my initial impression of the build here is that this feels quite a bit more refined. But I got to say that I'm never a fan of this style of headband that doesn't have the swivel on it. It's the same headband that exists with the Sundara. Now, this from the looks of it also is not the Adorama version or whatever the version that I've seen you know, floating around. I know Android has or had one uh, that I think Tyler has right now. Um, and this does not look like that one as far as the grill is concerned. That one is a little bit more see-through. But the question remains of whether or not this sounds any different. So maybe eventually I'll try and get the, to the bottom of it and see if I can get that one up from Tyler. I'll steal it from you. Let me just uh, put this on and see how comfortable it is. Again, not my favorite headband. Oh gosh, this is very stiff. Again, another reason this headband is terrible. It's a terrible design. In many ways, I actually even prefer that newer one that they're going to um, with, you know, the Deva and the HE5XX, which are the same headphone acoustically. Even though it feels maybe not that sturdy, that newer one, um, I do think that it's it's more comfortable because it has the cup swivel there. But, you know, this doesn't feel as heavy as I remember the original HE500 feeling, and I know the HE6 was of a similar weight there, so that's not too bad. Um, let me see what cables it comes with. Always another fun roll of the dice. Hey, look at this. Okay, so you get the typical surgical tubing stuff that Hi-Fi Man often uh, provides with their headphones, which nobody is really a huge fan of. You know, functionally, these are just totally fine. Um, but I think some of the thinking with this is that, you know, because these are fairly high-end headphones, um, most people are going to be replacing the cable anyways with something that is uh, maybe a little bit better ergonomically and aesthetically. So what's the point in including really nice high-end cables? I have a different opinion, but I think that's sort of the, the thinking that goes into that. Um, but for example, Odyssey's cables are absolutely fantastic. So I, if Odyssey can do it, you know, I, I don't see why other companies can't. Um, but anyways, looks like you get a balanced cable here and then an adapter. So I actually really like that um, using Nutrit connectors. And that really makes a certain amount of sense given that this headphone is 
a very demanding headphone, you know, it makes sense that the default connector would be a balanced one. Okay, now let's give this a listen. I can tell you right now that the technical performance of this is very impressive, uh, reminiscent again of what I remember from that previous HE500, the original there, um, and I'm sure the HE6 as well. Um, now, the big question I think on everybody's mind with this is how is the tuning in comparison? But that's something that's going to take a lot longer to properly evaluate. Um, in the meantime, I will say that the bass, while not boosted, is definitely dynamic. And that's that's the question that I'm sort of searching for the answer to with a lot of the testing that I'm do, that I've been doing lately, you know, with different headphones, including the LCD X. For some headphones, they have really good punch and slam, and for others, they don't. Completely irrespective of where their bass level is at, at least where their measured bass level is at. And so there might be certain acoustic behavior that contributes to this, and it's a matter of just trying to figure that out. So I'm very curious how this is going to, uh, I guess, respond to that. Let's uh, let's keep listening. Think something new under the sun. Mm. All right, so the only real issue that I'm noticing here with the frequency response so far is that it, it does sound like it has that typical sort of like mid to upper mid um, distance. There's often a bit of a mid-range recession there, somewhere at around like 2K with many high fi headphones. And this seems to have that as well. So what happens is it gives the, it, it creates a bit of distinction there between the upper mids and lower mids, meaning that certain times vocals can sound a little bit uh, empty. Uh, let me keep listening again. To cover up your games, you try. I'm definitely going to be EQing this. Uh, mainly I'm going to be adding a little bit of a, a sub bass shelf there um, or some sort of bass shelf uh, to a certain degree and then I'm going to be filling in that sort of mid-range uh, section there around 2K. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything to the treble but we'll see. Um, again, maybe on some tracks. I, I hear just occasionally this little bit of shimmer coming through. My impressions here are that the technical performance or the detail and instrument separation and incisiveness are outstanding, fantastic. Um, and that it has better dynamics than the Ananda and the Aria. So also, that's good. Where I'm less enthusiastic, at least right now, is in the overall tonal balance. Again, certain types of vocals can come across a little lean, I think, so far. Um, but more testing needs to be done here. So um, that does it for this video. Um, I will do more testing and I'll publish all the results of the measurements and everything up on the headphone community forum. If you haven't checked that out yet, definitely do so. I'll leave a link in the description for that. And then also make sure to be subscribed so you can see the full review when it comes out. Uh, it should be in about a week or two. Anyways, uh, that does it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.